Thanks for joining us in the Teaching at Conestoga series. These videos should help with some of the most frequently asked questions people have when they start teaching at the college. In this video, we will discuss creating a lesson plan. A lesson plan is an intentional way of structuring and guiding the learning experience of your class. It's telling the story of the what, how, and why of the content you'll be teaching that day. By the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to creating your own engaging, thoughtful, and effective lesson plans. Lesson plans strengthen your teaching and give students the organization and structure they need to learn effectively. At Conestoga, we recommend something called the BOPS framework for planning your lessons. Each letter of the BOPS acronym stands for an element you can add to your lesson plan to increase student engagement and understanding. B stands for Bridgen. What are you going to do to gain interest and motivation as you introduce your topic? There are a number of effective ways you can bridge into a lesson. For example, tell an interesting story related to the day's topic. Share a surprising fact, image, or statistic. Outline how the day's learning will build on the previous class, or connect an idea to the learner's own experiences. The point of the bridge is to hook the students into the lesson and generate interest in the topic. Next, we ask you to be clear about the outcomes. What skills or knowledge should students have at the end of the class? And how well are they expected to know or do something? Remind students where this lesson falls within the list of outcomes on the course outline and within the flow of the instructional plan and how the lesson ties to any upcoming evaluations. Identifying the outcomes gives students a map of where they are and where they should be by the end of the lesson. The first P stands for pre-assessment. This is just a quick way for you to determine what students already know about the material you're teaching that day. You may also be interested in finding out about their prior school or workplace experiences with the topic. It's an opportunity for you to adjust your lesson, if need be, and review or clear up any misunderstandings. The next P in the BOPS framework stands for presentation. This is where you bring in your expertise and share new information through input or demonstration. Adult learners learn best when they are given information in short increments and then are allowed to apply their learning through practice. Generally, it's most effective to keep the presentation of new input to between 10 and 20 minutes before switching to another activity. You can have multiple mini lectures in the class period, but it's a good idea to create opportunities for students to apply their learning between them. The next P is for practice or participatory learning. This gives students an opportunity to co-create knowledge and to apply what they have learned in the lesson so far. It's imperative that you provide students with an opportunity to manipulate and practice the content both alone and in collaboration with others, and that you circulate and coach while they do so. The last P in this model is for post-assessment. You can determine this by asking them to solve a problem, work through a case study, answer some guided questions, or write a one-minute paper to see if they actually have achieved the lesson's learning outcomes. If they haven't, then you know you need to review or present some information in a different way. Finally, the last letter, S, stands for summary. You want an intentional and powerful closing to your class to ensure interest stays high and students leave your class feeling energized and interested. Some good ways to summarize and close your class include a thoughtful quotation, a review of the day's topics, or posing a provocative question that you will answer in the next class. A few takeaways from this video. First, this is a flexible model. You don't necessarily have to keep to this order, and you can combine some elements, or even skip one from time to time, if that would best suit the learning. Second, participation doesn't always have to mean group work or collaboration. It can also be quiet reflection and working through questions individually. If you do have students work in groups, Keep the groups to three or four so that students can hear each other and actively contribute. Third, when having students do participatory learning, 
explain the purpose of that activity. How will it help them to develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes they need to do well in their field? How will it prepare them, or how will they demonstrate their learning during upcoming evaluations? Finally, you can find more guidance on creating a lesson plan using the BOPS model in your Conestoga Faculty Orientation Handbook, available either as a hard copy or downloadable from a link on the Teaching and Learning website. Contact Teaching and Learning if you'd like further support, an individual consultation, or additional resources. Thank you for being an important part of the active learning opportunities that Conestoga is known for.